Good morning, dear Sangha. Uh, today is uh, May the 9th in the year 2008, and we are in uh, Hanoi for our retreat engaged Buddhism in the 21st uh, century. In 1964, I was um, I was uh, teaching in uh, Columbia University, New York. Uh, my colleagues in Vietnam uh, summoned me back to Vietnam in order to help. And uh, one of the things I try to do is to set up uh, a school uh, to train uh, young social workers in order to send them to the countryside, helping the people who suffer because of poverty, social uh, injustice, uh, war, and so on. The war was going on. Later on, we helped uh, setting up uh, the Van Hang Buddhist uh, University in Saigon. This is a part of uh, engaged Buddhism. Uh, you have compassion in your heart. And when you have compassion and loving kindness in your heart, they want to express themselves in action. Love in action. Compassion in action. So the School of Youth for Social Service is a form of uh, expression of love and compassion. So many young people, including young monks and nuns, uh, sign up for the training. And we uh, found it in uh, Futohua, in the vicinity of Saigon, um, a place where we, uh, we can train uh, young people to go out and uh, to do the work of helping uh, people in the countryside. We did not want uh, our work to be uh, sponsored by uh, political uh, parties. We did not want to be involved in the, the war. So we did not want to receive any money from the government, either by of the South uh, or the North. And uh, we rely only on the grassroots uh, in order to uh, function as uh, a movement of social service uh, inspired by the idea of compassion, understanding, and loving kindness. I remember in 1964, we organized our students into teams of three people, and we went visiting every house, from house to house, like uh, the, the monks go begging, uh, 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 for food in every morning. And he come and ask for uh, uh, to talk with uh, uh, the people in the house about our intention to organize a, a school of youth for social service, training uh, young people going out to help uh, with uh, uh, the aspects of uh, economics, um, education, health, uh, and organization, organization. We had studied um, uh, the kibbutz. We had studied uh, the, um, the uh, Philippine um, rural reconstruction movement. We want to learn from other uh, uh, countries. And we adopt up the non-violent approach of uh, rural development and uh, bringing uh, help and support to those who are so poor, 
who are victims of uh, ignorance, um, uh, sickness, uh, poverty, uh, social injustice, and war. And uh, I remember uh, our students uh, learned to build their classroom, uh, their dormitories by themselves. We were making bricks, we are making uh, blocks of uh, cement in order to build our own uh, houses, our own uh, living quarters, our school. We dig our own well and so on. And it's very joyful. Uh, in fact, uh, there's so many young people who wanted to come and serve, but uh, we only we could only accept 300 of them in the beginning. Later on, the number of uh, social workers uh, 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 grew into nearly 10,000 people. And uh, the social workers, uh, they have uh, developed a kind of um, uh, doctrine, a kind of uh, um, theology of engaged Buddhism. Ng uh, was uh, a social worker, I remember, and he was uh, specialized on helping farmers uh, in order to protect um, um, uh, the domestic uh, animals raised for, for, for food. And uh, he was um, trying to help uh, uh, farmers as how to not to uh, let the uh, chicken, the pigs uh, die because of diseases. And he was uh, working, he was sent to uh, uh, several villages in order to advise uh, the farmers in order to, uh, to protect their livestock and so on. And he was asked a question, you young men, young woman, you work so well. How much uh, salary do you uh, get from the government? And the peasants asked him. In fact, he did not have any salary. He was a social worker uh, of the School of Youth for Social Service. He was a volunteer. Uh, the School of Youth for Social Service uh, gave him enough in order to, uh, to have uh, food uh, uh, and so on. So he said, uh, no, I'm not working for the government. I'm, uh, I'm practicing uh, punya. Punya means merit. That is, uh, um, that is a, uh, uh, a popular term uh, in Vietnamese Buddhism. You go to the temple and you do things in order to accumulate merits. It's a kind of bank account that you save for the future. <laughs> if you do so many good things, and then uh, that is uh, your um, invisible bank account. Uh, in the future, you will profit from that. This is a very strong belief in Buddhist countries. You say something good, you do something good, and then these things are never lost. They are for you forever. And you and your children go profit from that uh, kind of good karma, uh, good action, uh, kind of uh, uh, bank account uh, for the future, the punya, punya. And the lady said, well, we usually uh, do punya only in the temple. Wow. And he said, now people suffer so much in, the, in society, in the villages. The Buddha, even the Buddha has to come here in order to help. So we follow the Buddha to the, uh, to the village in order to perform, to, 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 to practice uh, punya. So that is a very easy kind of uh, theology. That's a very kind of doctrine on engaged Buddhism um, made up by our social workers. We are just practicing punya, merits. And since uh, the Buddha uh, does not stay in the temple anymore because he saw so much suffering out here, so he, he has gone out and we follow him out here in order to, 
practice punya also. This is uh, totally understandable for uh, the peasants in the countryside. In many places where we went, uh, it's very difficult situation to be because uh, during the day, uh, the village was controlled by the anti-communist. And during the night, uh, the place was controlled by the communist. And that is why it's so difficult. Uh, we, we manage in order to not to align ourselves with one uh, uh, warring party. And that is very difficult. Uh, the Buddhist uh, right view is uh, to embrace both sides as your brothers and sisters. And you don't want to align with one side and another to oppose the other side. Uh, your practice is reconciliation and peace. And in a situation of fire and blood, like uh, uh, the situation of war in Vietnam, it's very difficult for you to to, to stick to that kind of uh, insight and uh, practice. And we have lost the many social workers harassed by one side or by, by the other side. And we have lost uh, many of our social workers their life just because uh, we try not to, to take side. And if uh, you go to the Phap Van Temple, Dhamma Cloud Temple in Ho Chi Minh City uh, to visit, uh, you see a number of uh, graves uh, built for these uh, social workers who lost their life uh, in action of their, because of their commitment to uh, non-violent uh, uh, social service. We know that if you don't have a strong spiritual uh, uh, dimension into your life as uh, a social worker, and then you will lose um, yourself very soon. You will burn out. Uh, you will be divided among yourself. And that is why the order of intervening is behind you, was behind you as uh, uh, a support. Every social worker has to come home to the headquarters in order to attend a day of mindfulness. Uh, learning how to uh, how to master their emotion, their fear. Um, learning how to breathe and uh, to stay themselves in difficult situations. So the spiritual uh, practice. Uh, was very crucial to uh, social service. Um, at that time, there was only six uh, members of uh, the order of interbeing. Uh, three uh, brothers and three sisters. And Sister Chiang Kong, our uh, sister Chiang Kong is one of the three first sis sisters of the order of interbeing. I remember the first ordination of the, the six members of OI. I myself offered them a session of uh, deep relaxation. They had worked so hard, and that, is, that was the day of their ordination. And uh, I advised them to sit uh, on a high chair with their uh, feet uh, pending. And I um, lead them to uh, practice deep breathing and imagining that they are sitting on uh, the bank of uh, a creek and uh, their feet were take, uh, touching the cool water uh, in the creek. Uh, we have one hour before the ceremony of ordination. So the session of um, 
deep relaxation uh, is to help them to recover themselves uh, in order to uh, be fully prepared for receiving the 14 uh, mindfulness trainings. I also uh, offer them, each of them, uh, a lamp, a um, table or lamp for their room, because each uh, um, was uh, entitled to have uh, a room, uh, a bed, a uh, table to work, and a lamp. Uh, and uh, I wrote um, with Chinese uh, uh, characters on the lampshade uh, for six uh, members of the for six members of the uh, order of interbeing like trí uh, tuệ đăng, the lamp of uh, uh, wisdom, a mang nguyệt đăng, the lamp of full moon, and so on. In 1966, I got a letter from Cornell University in Ithaca, New York, to come for a series of lectures. And that was arranged by the Fellowship of Reconciliation in New York for me to get out of the country and to call for a cessation of hostilities in Vietnam. The purpose is to come and call for help and not just to give a series of lectures on the situation of Southeast Asia. So after after the series of lectures in Cornell, uh, I toured the country, North America, uh, to speak about the war in Vietnam, the real, the real situation of the war in Vietnam, how people suffer and how people want to stop the war. And uh, I offer sessions of uh, poetry reading. I offer uh, Dharma talks. I offer talks on the situation of the war in Vietnam. I met with uh, intellectuals, uh, students, uh, humanist leaders, uh, uh, religious leaders, and uh, I gave them the kind of information that were not available to them. And uh, we toured the country uh, with the support of the Fellowship of Re Reconciliation uh, in order to uh, bring uh, information about the true situation in Vietnam. And in Washington, D.C., uh, we organized uh, a press conference uh, where I called for the cessation of uh, the bombing of the North. Uh, the coming into a peace conference uh, in order to end the war in Vietnam. And because of that, uh, I was not allowed to go home because I did dare to speak out for peace. The government of South Vietnam, the anti-communist uh, government, uh, did not allow me to go home. And during that time, uh, the war was intensified. And Sister uh, Nhật Chi Mai, Phang Thi Mai, who was one of the six uh, first members of uh, the Order of the Bing, she immolated herself for, to call for peace. And all of us did not know of her attention, intention. Uh, sister Nikki Mai was the eldest, eldest sister of the tree. And she prepared for her action alone. No, no one knew about that. And one uh, early morning, she came to the Tử Nghiêm Temple and Nunnery. And she set up the statue of uh, Quan Yin and uh, uh, the Virgin Mary in front of her. She left behind a letter for uh, the leader, the president of North Vietnam, South Vietnam, the president of America. And she said that I die in order to draw your attention to the fact 
that we don't want this war. We want to end this war. We don't want this killing of, uh, of brothers by brothers. And uh, she left uh, many poems she wrote. Uh, in Vietnam, uh, at that time, you are forbidden to speak about peace and reconciliation because uh, the official language is to fight to the, uh, to the end, to get liberation and peace. And a uh, uh, few days ago, I spoke about uh, my book, Lotus in the Sea of Fire, uh, published by Hugh and Wang. And there was an underground uh, edition in Vietnam, and many of our friends, because they circulated the books, they were put in prison, including our sister, Chiang Kong. Before she died, Sister Nhat Chi Mai wrote to me a letter. I still keep that letter. She said, Thay, please don't worry, we shall have peace. I am offering myself uh, uh, as an element of that peace. Uh, I believe that we will have peace soon. So a person who is dying worries that the other person will worry too much. And I learn of the self immolation through, a, through the New York Times. Uh, the New York, York Times that day uh, printed an article about that, and there is the image of Sister Chiang Kong holding the letters uh, left behind by Sister Nhat Chi Mai. Not much later, I learned that uh, five uh, members of the School of Youth for Social Service were murdered on the bank of the Saigon River because the anti-communists wanted uh, to, to suppress us. It's very difficult because uh, since you do not want to sign up with one side, you are not protected by any side. If you align with one side, at least you are protected by one side. And if you want to be independent, you want to be non-aligned, and then you'll be suppressed by both sides. And uh, you were suspected to be communist by the anti-communist. And we were suspected as anti-communist by the communist. It's a very difficult situation. But if you want to hold on to the line of compassion, uh, brotherhood, sisterhood, non-discrimination, you have to stick to that uh, line of right thinking and right action. So the School of Youth for Social Service, although uh, having a lot of difficulty, but we were able to do a lot of, of woodwork. We established uh, pilot villages and proved that it is possible for the farmers, the peasants to stand up by themselves and not wait for the government to help and uh, improve their own situation in matter of uh, health, matter of uh, education, in matter of uh, economics, uh, improving the economic, economic conditions and so on. And then the, when the war became uh, very intense, uh, we set up uh, we, uh, refugee camps. We, uh, we, uh, we uh, create, uh, we, we work for the resettlement of uh, refugees. We sponsored uh, thousands and thousands of 
often created by the war. Uh, that is part of uh, engaged Buddhism. And always we remember that if you don't uh, maintain your practice, you will give up because of despair, of uh, fear, and so on. In Talok, very close to the militarized zone, we build up, we have built up a village, Talok. We send social workers up there and we help the peasants rebuild uh, the village because the village had been bombed. And then after we have rebuilt uh, the village, the village was bombed again for the second time. And in order not to, not to allow despair to overcome, we decided to rebuild uh, the village. I was not in the country anymore. I was in exile, but uh, I was trying to help from the outside, the School of Youth for Social Service. We tried to raise funds to help. And there uh, are uh, religious humanitarian organizations in Europe, in America, uh, helping us. We rebuilt the town of village, and it was bombed again for the third time, and the fourth time. And it was me, who is in Paris, who suggested that we, we should rebuild the place because uh, we should not allow despair to overcome, because despair is the worst thing that can happen to a human being. I remember the young people uh, come to me and ask this question, Thay, do you think that the war will end soon? It's a very difficult question, because you, don't, you yourself, you don't see any light at the end of the tunnel. You cannot say that uh, the war will end soon. There is no symptom telling you that the war will end soon. It went on and on and on and on. So with a question like that, you have to breathe in and out many times before you can offer an answer. So I breathed in and out several times, and then calmly I said, my dear friends, they are all young people very dedicated. I said, dear friends, the Buddha said that everything is impermanent, including the war. So the war should end one day. What is important is that uh, we're doing something in order to help end the war. Do something. And since you are able to do something, we, are, we will not become victims of despair. And that is uh, the teaching I, I gave to the young people. And during the many decades I was in exile, uh, we continued to uh, work for peace and reconciliation in the country. Even my, um, my books were, had to be uh, printed underground in Vietnam. I always send manuscript home. And although these books are published uh, with a, a, a pseudonym, uh, uh, my friends in Vietnam continue to learn to, uh, to have uh, that kind of spiritual food that they so need. And uh, after we set up Plum Village in France, we offer uh, retreats of uh, many kinds. We offer retreats for war veterans. We offer interfaith uh, retreats, retreats. We offer retreats for environmentalists. We offer retreats for, um, for um, mm, health, health, uh, health professionals. We offer retreat for businessmen, 
we, we even offer retreat for policemen, uh, uh, Hollywood uh, actors and actress, uh, and it's it's very clear that Buddhism can be offered to any walk of society. And uh, the many friends of ours uh, who are able to go to prison uh, in order to set up the practice in prison. And we send so many uh, books uh, into prison. And uh, now in many countries like America, England, uh, people um, are practicing sitting meditation, a mindful a breathing, uh, uh, mindful walking. And uh, we receive uh, from time to time uh, letters from inmates of uh, prisons. And I remember there was one uh, Amaran prisoner who said that uh, he happened to read, uh, to have uh, uh, obtained the book uh, Stepping into Freedom. That is a manual for novice monks. And he tried to apply all the teaching and book, and he lived like a monk. No, with which monk uh, in prison, and he said it. Well, I transform my life. I am happy in prison. I am a real monk in prison. <laughs> the other day we spoke about uh, the practice of releasing the tension in the body, uh, holding uh, the emotion in order to uh, get a relief and practice it looking deeply into uh, the roots of our emotions and feelings in order to get the insight. And by that insight we can get liberated from the emotions of despair, of anger, and so on. And uh, with the practice of the five uh, mindfulness trainings, the practice the 14 mindfulness standings, uh, you cultivate uh, that kind of uh, insight, that kind of compassion that will help heal yourself and heal your family. And if uh, parents and teachers um, master the practice, they can help uh, their children, uh, their students uh, to, to release the tension uh, to embrace their fear, their anger, their despair. And uh, this is a true uh, engaged Buddhism. We have uh, already uh, organized many retreats for school teachers in uh, many countries, including uh, Germany. And school teachers, if they are motivated by the desire to uh, practice and to help, they can be Dharma teachers in their own uh, uh, school, in their own classroom, and helping um, uh, their students. There are many young people who do, who, have, who do not have a chance in their family. They have not been able to learn love in their family. They have not received love in their family. So school teachers uh, may give them a second chance. The school can be a second family for, for these uh, young people. And the school teachers can love them as uh, par like parents. And they should have enough time to sit with their students and listen to their suffering and give advice as how to practice. And uh, these uh, young people can go home and even help their parents, like the way uh, Young people came to our retreat, and finally they went home and they helped their parents uh, 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 to transform. So engaged Buddhism is our business in every minute, in every uh, hour, and it is possible to bring Buddhism in a in a non a non uh, confession confessional. Uh, non-religious uh, form. It is absolutely possible to share Buddhism without uh, the mark, the appearance of a religion. You can practice Buddhism 
en øh, en anden en øh, non-formal way. Uh, you don't use the language of Buddhism. You don't look Buddhist. You don't smell Buddhist. <laughs> And yet you are very Buddhist. Because the Buddha said, my practice is the practice of non-practice. In the teaching of the Buddha, uh, you can discover deep uh, psychology. And uh, we can put into the practice what we learn from the school uh, of Buddhism called uh, Uh, Vishnati uh, Matrata, uh, manifestation only of Vishnanavada, uh, uh, consciousness uh, only. We know that uh, we have the seeds of uh, happiness, seeds of suffering in, in us, and the other people do have the seeds also. And the practice of uh, two diligence is to handle the seeds in us. Tư chánh cần, the four practice of diligence. And the practice uh, is about the seeds and how to handle the seeds in you. The first practice is uh, the good, the bad seeds in you, like the seed of despair, the seed of uh, jealousy, the seed of uh, anger. Don't give them a chance. Let them sleep quietly down there at the bottom of uh, your consciousness. Do not give them not give the negative seat a chance. Don't water them. Don't let the environment water them. So they have no chance to manifest. And they become naturally weaker and weaker. This is a very uh, smart. Whatever you read, whatever you, you see, whatever you, you hear, may water the seed of despair, anger, violence in you. So choose an environment where you are protected. And choose uh, companions and friends who know the practice. They will refrain from watering the seed of suffering, despair, anger in you. This is, this is an art. We have to reorganize our life. We should create an environment where the bad seeds in us will not be watered every day. We don't water them, and we don't let them water them. You know that our consciousness, uh, as we have uh, seen the other day, has so many layers, and the upper layers is a mind consciousness. Ethic. And that, that this part down here is store consciousness, tang thức. Tang thức. And all the seeds are here.
Star consciousness is made of all the seeds. And that is why it has the other name, the totality of the seeds. Nhất thiết chủng thức. Sattva Bijaka. Sattva means all, the totality. Bija means seeds. That is the name, the other name of uh, store consciousness. Store consciousness maintain all the seeds, and store consciousness are the seeds themselves. The maintainer and the object of maintenance are the same.